Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to give you an introduction to machine learning and illustrate the types of machine learning problems. We'll also take a look at machine learning algorithms with examples. So let's get started. When writing a program, we are only thinking about producing a single outcome based on a situation or constraint that exists. For example, while creating a game to play chess against a user automatically, we program the computer with code like, if opposing bishop in front of my king and no pawn is in the vicinity, check if king can move. If the king can move, move the king, else game over. This is one little step with one little condition. In a game like chess, there are thousands of such situations that may occur and it is the developer's job to write code for each case. Even if a developer was able to conjure up all possible cases, these 100,000 lines of code can only be used to do one thing, that is play chess and nothing more. Now with machine learning on the other hand, you don't program for a specific algorithm to solve a specific problem. Instead, we program such that the same code can be used by just changing the input data. So the same code that plays chess is the same code that determines the gender of a person, and this is the same code that can identify objects in an image, like so. Three major types of problems you may run into in machine learning are classification, regression, and clustering. Let's take a look at each one of these cases. Classification is the problem of categorizing samples or objects into a fixed number of predefined groups. Examples of classification involve determining if a human sample is male or female, determine if an email is spam or not spam, or determine the digit drawn on a piece of paper. The first two cases have two categories, as mentioned, whereas the last digit classification problem has 10 different groups for digits 0 through 9. Now, the second type of problem that we run into is regression. This involves prediction of a value for a sample. Some problems like this involve, say, determining the IQ of a person or an animal, or predicting stocks over the course of time, or predicting the price of a house based on certain characteristics. Now, the third type of machine learning problem that we may run into is clustering. Although it seems similar to classification, there are major differences. Most importantly, clustering does not use labels for training data. A popular example is dividing documents into a set of groups such that related documents are grouped together. A universal approach for solving most problems in machine learning is possible because every type of problem has samples that can be represented as a collection of features. Features are ideally independent unit quantities used to represent a particular characteristic of sample data. Let's consider the problem of determining the price of a house. Since the price takes continuous values like $300,000, $400,000, $401,000, this is a typical example of a regression problem. Now, what characteristics can you think of that may determine the price of a house? The first thing that comes to mind would probably be the size of the house, and the second would be location. Based on these features, we'd represent a 30 square house in New York City as a two-dimensional vector, 30 square, New York City. On a side note, in the context of mathematics, vectors are n cross one matrices, also called column matrices used to represent a quantity. Since computers love working with numbers, it makes sense to just represent these vectors numerically. So for the first feature, let's just take the number of squares without the unit. And instead of using the city name for the second feature, we use the cost of living index for that city. Since this value is 100 for New York City as of 2017, our feature vector would be 30 hundred. We'll give two other examples too. A 45 square house in Kansas City would be represented by the feature vector 45 and 69.09. And a 50 square house in Austin, Texas would be represented as 50 and 74.04. Note that a mere two features to represent a house is an oversimplification. We may have dozens of such features and over a thousand such samples to work with. 
It is up to you to determine which features contribute to the problem, that is, predicting the house price in this case. As a final transformation, we would want to normalize these features to take the values between, say, 0 and 1. So why would you want to do this? In the current example, the first feature, number of squares, can take values from 0 to, say, 70, while the second feature, the cost of living index, can take values from 0 to 150. They're on different scales. We want all features to be weighted equally, that is, given equal importance. However, greater the variance of a feature may give a higher weight or higher importance to said feature. Since the cost of living index has a greater variance, it will be considered a more important feature than number of squares, which is not what we want. So we bring them both down to a scale of 0 to 1 using unity-based normalization, also known as feature scaling. So we can use a simple formula to compute the new scaled feature. That is, x bar is equal to x minus x min divided by x max minus x min. Here, x bar is the scaled value of x. That is the feature for a given sample. x max represents the maximum value of a given feature. So this means that x max is 70 for feature 1 and 150 for feature 2. x min is the minimum value of a given feature. In both cases, x min is equal to 0. So by substituting the value of x min as 0, the formula for feature scaling reduces to x bar is equal to x by x max. Applying these values to the three house samples above, we get new vectors where all features lie between 0 and 1. These samples can be used as features by a regression model to estimate house prices. This is the run of the mill for not only regression type problems, but classification and clustering as well. You just need to transform the problem a bit. So now, if we consider the problem, determine price status of a house as inexpensive, moderate, or expensive, given size and location. Then we now have a classification problem because there are three predefined categories. For clustering, just plot these houses on a 2D plane against feature 1 and feature 2, and use a clustering model to group these houses into a number of clusters. Houses in a cluster would have similar price ranges. This model I've been talking about uses certain learning algorithms to perform classification, regression, or clustering. Machine learning algorithms can be classified into three major types, supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and semi-supervised learning. Supervised learning involves training your machine by supplying features of numerous samples and their corresponding labels. This is used to build statistical models that can determine the label of any new input sample. All classification and regression problems are solved with supervised learning algorithms. In the regression form of our house example, the labels are the actual prices of each sample house. So for the New York City house, it's say around $800,000. For the 45 square house in Kansas City, the label is say $170,000 and the 50 square house in Austin is about around $400,000. For the classification form of this house problem, these three houses could be classified as expensive, inexpensive, and moderately expensive, respectively. Basically, we go up to our computer and say, hey, here's a set of features for sample house one, and here's the corresponding price. Now learn it. Now here's a set of features for sample house two, and here's its corresponding price. Now learn it, and like so. So after analyzing the features and label prices for a thousand houses, a model is constructed. You can now throw in a new set of house features and the model should be able to predict the price. This model actually learns using supervised learning algorithms such as logistic regression, support vector machines, decision trees, random forests, neural networks, and so on. In unsupervised learning, the goal is to have the computer learn how to do something that we don't tell it how to do. Unlike the supervised learning approach, unsupervised learning has no labeled training data. There are no predefined groups in which objects are classified in a classification problem. Clustering problems are solved with unsupervised learning. In our house problem, 
features are simply plotted and close lying points are grouped together to form a cluster. Let's take another example here, the classification of articles. Say we have 1000 articles that we want to classify by topic so that related articles are grouped together. However, we don't know what the labels could be, the labels being the category. They could be sports, entertainment, literature, history, or any other field. To solve a problem like this, we determine the features that describe this article. Say, text frequency. Suppose in the 1000 documents, we have 100,000 unique words. We could create a vector of size 100,000 where each entry is the number of times a particular word occurs. These vectors are normalized and virtually plotted on a 100,000 dimensional space. Then, we group points close to each other to form a cluster as these points indicate the articles that are talking about a similar topic. There are many algorithms used to determine such clusters. Some common clustering algorithms include hierarchical clustering, k-means clustering, Gaussian mixture models, self-organized maps, hidden Markov models, and more. And more! In stores near you. The third type of machine learning algorithm is semi-supervised learning. This is a combination of supervised and unsupervised learning approaches. Data out in the wild is not always labeled. Many a time, we usually have n samples x1 to xn labeled y1 to yn, and additional m samples xn plus 1 to xn plus m unlabeled, where the number of unlabeled samples far outweighs the former, that is m much larger than n. There are many types of semi-supervised learning approaches. We could perform self-training. This is the simplest type of semi-supervised learning. It involves training a set of n samples with labels using supervised learning, and then predicting the value or category of sample x n plus i, and finally adding the sample with the predicted label to the training set. We repeat this training and labeling to get more accurate predictions as we progress. The second type of semi-supervised learning is the use of generative models. A generative algorithm models how data was generated in order to categorize a signal. A good example of this would be the use of hidden Markov models in speech recognition, that is, determining the text from an input speech signal. We then have the S3VC, which is the semi-supervised support vector machines. This has applications in classification problems very similar to that of the original SVM counterpart. Graph-based algorithms can be used in handwritten digit classification and even document categorization. Although similar symbols may vary, we use label propagation to connect these samples indirectly in a graph, enabling better classification performance. And that's it. To recap, in this video, we talked about what is machine learning, the types of machine learning problems, the types of machine learning algorithms to solve these types of machine learning problems. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If so, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more videos. Bye.